This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Charles McElwee from the Greater Hazelton Historical Society and Museum tells us what the hustle and bustle of Christmas time in Hazelton was like in years past. Plus, get ready for the Christmas musical hit of the season. I'm Ken Carr, and these are your top stories from SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Tonight, we take a look at Christmas shopping past with Charles McElwee of the Greater Hazelton Historical Society and Museum and our Lisa Sugart. McElwee used newspapers.com for a lot of his research. So I thought I would take a look back to see how retail has evolved over the, the past century and a half. So one newspaper from 1889, Christmas, of uh, the plain speaker talks about has all the advertisements and what was going on in the city and there was one store called th williams and company and it gives perspective on how much pricing has evolved too for the consumer but uh, mixed candy at th williams uh, 10 cents per pound clear toys 11 cents figs and dates five and eight cents so um, and poultry. So I guess it was a grocery store. It doesn't say specifically what it was, but it, it gives you an idea of how the uh, consum consumers evolved over the time. And uh, if you just look at the advertisements from these papers, it just shows you how marketing has evolved as well. I know how it's changed since I was a kid coming downtown. We did all our shopping downtown, came out with your mom and dad, or we used to take a bus from Beaver Meadows to Hazleton. My grandfather was a bus driver. You'd be down here, and there was the Leader store. There was the Sunray. Um, I remember American Auto. Uh, I, I'm dating myself on all of these things I shouldn't be saying. But uh, it was cool, and you'd be walking around in the snow, and the big trees lit up on the old Dysroth building across the street. It was just, you know, and you'd hear Christmas music and the Salvation Army kettlebell. It was like something out of a Hallmark movie. Right. No, and the window displays, they were, yeah. people would dress the windows, and Dice Rose, the leader store, would have their special sales as the newspapers would show. And then there was, all, of course, Santa Claus. And we, we always say my, my grandparents, my, the McElwees, they're, they're buried next to Santa Claus at St. Gabriel's because it was Jack Bristlin. Oh. who was the famous, everybody knew him as Santa Claus, I'm, I'm told from you know, the baby boomer, boomer generation. But uh, consumerism really evolved since World War II, too, because that was after, after the war, we had access to consumer credit, and it, we had the GI Bill, so the, the country really evolved. But people forget, uh, brick and mortar retail still accounts for 91% of shopping. Despite the disruption that we're seeing with technology and online shopping, Brick and mortar remains the majority. Of course, we've seen what's happened to Sears and elsewhere, but it's still uh, where people typically go to shop. And we certainly see that this time of year at malls or strip malls. People still prefer physical retail. And hopefully we will see more even downtown because as the revitalization continues and with the beautiful new art center and everything, hopefully that's going to attract even more downtown. Right, because what happened was when, when we had revitalization efforts in the 60s, it was revitalization gone bad because we wiped out the residential neighborhood around the downtown with downtown south. And interstate highways, ironically for many communities, it hastened the departure of downtown retail for cities and towns. So we're seeing uh, really uh, people are coming back to downtowns. So it remains to be seen how that will impact some of the smaller cities, not only in Pennsylvania, but across the country. Thank you, Charles and Lisa. SSP TV News will be on hiatus for one week so we can enjoy the Christmas holiday in its place. You can enjoy special holiday programming and our sister program, Community NEPA News. The news returns December 31st. Time now for weather on SSP TV News. Christmas tree shark doo 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 doo. That's the one in downtown Hazleton over there. Some ornaments with heavy rains. We have a flood watch in effect. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service tonight. Rain 80% chance, possibly a snow shower, low of 36 degrees. Saturday 20% chance of rain and snow showers, high of 37, partly cloudy at night, low of 26. Sunday is partly sunny, highs in the mid 30s. 30% 30 chance of light snow Sunday night, mostly cloudy, low of 28 degrees. Partly sunny on Monday, high of 34, mostly cloudy at night, low of 23. On Christmas Day, mostly sunny, high of 34. And then at night, a chance of snow showers, 30% chance of precipitation, cloudy with a low of 25 degrees. 
This week on our sister show, Community NEPA News, I talk with Standard Speaker Sports Editor Dave Seaman about the old Anthracite Basketball League. A lot of those games were played right here at St. Joe's Gym in Hazleton, and now it's the home of Holy Family Academy. This season, their junior high teams have teamed up with MMI. Here the boys are taking on the Maple Manor Vikings. That's my old school, Bishop Hafey forever. This was a great game. Anthony Concepcion helped lead the Vikings to a victory, scoring 14 points in the 37-36 win. Jonas Aponic led the HFA MMI team with 15 points. Now to tip off of the girls game at Historic St. Joe's Gym. Francie Martinelli gets things going for the home team. They would go on to win this game. But let's look at some more highlights. This is Jalen Sanser with the take for Maple Manor. And if you're a fan of this show, you know I love a steal and score defense and offense in one highlight. Thank you, Ella. Thoringer. These games were great and feature a number of stars we'll be seeing at the high school level soon. So check that out. There was a lot of other action last night in sports. Check out standardspeaker.com for results. It's our second to final show of the year. I'm in the studio and I'm singing. That's your final elf reference of the season. And here's a Christmas gram from all of us to all of you. You know Dasher and Prancer and Comet and Vixen. You know Dasher and Dancer, Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say close. Todos sus compañeros se reían sin parar y nuestro buen amigo no paraba de llorar. Ho, 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 Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you got my sleigh tonight? Then all the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, reindeer, you'll go down in history. Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, You'll go down in history. Merry Christmas, everybody. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. I forgot that one part. Sam Jr. and Lisa Sugar were the best, in my opinion. Oh, the show doesn't end there. Please stick around for our coverage of Around the Horn with Joe Madden featuring Joe Namath. And next, Lisa Sugar talks with students at the Tamaqua Area High School who made the holidays bright for others in their community. Watch SSP TV in Scranton Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. until noon on Comcast Channel 190. SSP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to family and friends of these who recently departed. Sister M. Cabrini of Danville, formerly of Beaver Meadows. Funeral will be Saturday at 1.30 p.m. at Maria Hall in Danville. Friends McCall Saturday from 11 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. at Maria Hall. The Brady Funeral Home in Danville is in charge of arrangements. Damien J. Donosco of Hazleton. Services will be private under the McNulty Funeral Home. Patricia Mary House Connect of Hazleton. A graveside service will be held Thursday at 11 a.m. at Calvary Cemetery. The Hazel Chapel of the Crofton News Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Lillian F. Lukacs of Freeland. Mass be Saturday at 8 a.m. at St. Mary's Church. The McEwell Check Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. Marjorie Murash of Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Mass be Thursday at 10 a.m. at St. John Bosco Church. Friends may call Wednesday from 2 to 4 p.m. and at 6 to 8 p.m. at the Harmon Funeral Home and Drums. And Louis D. Palumbo of Beaver Meadows. The Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home will announce the arrangements.